So so selection starts. Uh, you got the the four. You got you know the PT test and all that stuff. Yep. But then you kind of go into the four hour welcome party, mm-hmm. and uh, from from the reports kind of that that they were posting on the page, uh, apparently you just won everything. Yeah. So, I don't, so I what don't was know. what was yeah. that like? Like what's going through your head when when you're just like what you know? Did you yeah. just know you were going to win everything or what? <laughs> well, my initial thing was is for my buddy Paul. He's the one who I did the uh, the heavy with. He was like, be the gray man in selection. Don't let them know that you exist and sort of just float on. He knew I was going to finish it too. Like he, he knows me and he's like, just float on by until there's only a few of you left and they're obviously going to get to know you. So that was my plan going into it. Um, and during the, the, the run in the PT test, I had, I got first place in that. I was like trying to be the middleman, but the, the run was so easy. The, ter- the, the stuff that we had did, I hadn't ran on flat ground in months. And it was a pretty flat trail. Um, there were a little ups and downs. And they gave us an extra five minutes on it because of it was on a trail. So instead of 40 minutes, we had 45 minutes. So I, I, I started it off just being in the middle. I, I couldn't take I'm very impatient. I'm the impatient person. I'm always like fidgeting, going, going. That's why I own a gym because I can't be in an office. So I did that. And I, and I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to go. And I ended up – I wasn't competing at that time. I ended up being this first place. And then the rock march happened and I was in the middle. I was literally the last person when it started. And I just sort of was like moseying around halfway. But my pace that I was doing at home, I just knew I could do it better. So I just started going. And there was one kid. We were going like back and forth between each other. Um, uh, We weren't racing each other, but he would go. He'd get a little extra energy. And then I I ended up finishing finishing the, the rock thing first too. I was like really shocked. And I was like, this, my fucking training is already like showing right now. But I didn't have any idea about the welcome party. So I was, I wasn't nervous at all for it, but I knew it was going to be like just four hours of like, you know, madness. And, uh, I didn't know everything was like a race or like a, a, a competition against all the other like candidates there. So, um. I was like, I ain't fucking losing. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not doing that. So I just started going. And I have really good cardio. That's That was one of my main things that helped me um, compete in Muay Thai was my cardio. Um, you need to be able to last. A fight's not two minutes long or 30 seconds. It's 15 minutes long. So you got to be going harder in those last that last round. That last three minutes should be your hardest round. And all that training has really helped me anyway. My, my head, my mind, my body. So what was happening in uh, the welcome party was everything like I said is a race. So I'm like nowhere near. Like, I'm not a big guy. I'm tall, but I'm not like a big guy. I don't lift weights that much. So there was like guys who were physically stronger than me. And like right off the rip, like when we would start, say, just, just a sprint, for example, I'd probably be about like fourth or fifth back. But I can go like for a long time. So after like 30 seconds of the sprint, all these guys in first place ended up having to walk as soon as we got to like there was a hill that we had to do. As soon as the hill started, they stopped. And I just was like, I like to finish strong, not really start like that. And that's what happened. Then we'd do a bear crawl. Same thing. I'd be like fifth back and everyone would just gas out. And then I would just take the lead. My cardio took over. So and then what was happening is I would I would finish first and then they were like three, five go sit down and then they would do like another event or another exercise or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Then when that one was done, I got to wait literally until the person who finished last finished. Then I would get to hop back in and do the next event, which I just got to chill for a while. And sometimes they would let the person in second place rest too. Sometimes they didn't. It was really up in the air. So then the next one, I'm fresh again. So then I just won. And I, so I, I wouldn't say I sat a half the, half the welcome party by any means. It wasn't like that. But I got numerous amounts of breaks in the welcome party, like more than a dozen, where some people some people didn't have one. And the people who were winning the other ones who were coming in second place, it was never the same dude. So it was usually me and then some other person. So they were mixing it up. It wasn't like the person who was finishing second won all the ones too, or second place. So he was getting the breaks. So no one got a breakthrough. And that was something that I didn't get to experience. I wrote that in my AAR too, was 
jumping like ahead to like that next morning. It was before the 24 hour mark, but there was only four of us left at that point. And those other, there was 13 who ended up going to the 24 hour mark. Me and him were always, I was always first and he was always second. I don't know about those other guys, but he was always sort of like lingering near me. I could feel him like right there. It makes it look like third and fourth is bad, but they were third and fourth out of, I don't know, it was a 37 people. I think that ended up doing it. So that's good. So then what, so then what happens is, is they're the ones that are getting fucking picked on now and no one's bothering me in 13. We didn't even get bothered at all. We just were doing our own. I mean, we were working, but they were hounding these two guys. And then the guy who was in third place wasn't getting as much because he wasn't last. But then the dude who's in fourth place quit. So now all eyes go on to the third place. And so that's something that I never got to experience in selection. I, I always won and I never got the hounding until I started fucking jibber jabbering a little bit. Then they started getting on me. But uh, you got to, it's weird. Like I, it, it's a give and take now looking back at it at all. Like I know I was saying in my after thing, like I wish I didn't go so hard in my first 24 hours because it really wore me out. Like around like hour 35 ish, I started like feeling it. But now looking back on it, you got to fucking win. You, I wouldn't change that. I would go just as hard. I know I said differently at the end, but it's because I was just so fatigued. But looking back on it, it was so, it was worth it. I had so many breaks from winning, and you got to fucking win. If you're not winning, you're losing at that place. And they like – they there was guys who couldn't do the exercise, and then they were getting the attention. So they ended up doing way more – this one, I don't know what it was, but I had like walked by this dude. And he was like on like number 70 for burpees. Like I just heard him saying 70 and I was like, fuck, who's doing 70 burpees with a rock on, you know, like, so he quits, you know what I mean? Like it's just, so yeah, so, so the welcome party act and it was fun. It was a competition. It was fun. It was loud, chaotic. I like that. So it's a Muay Thai fight. You go into a ring, people are cheering, they're booing. It's chaos. There's blood, there's sweat. It's chaotic. I like that environment. And the more they yell and talk shit, I love I That's how I run my gym. I'm always yelling. It's a very loud, chaotic place, my gym. Um, and uh, so I feed off that. So like when they were like talking shit, like I just use that. Like that's part of my training and how I was trained like when I was a beginner. So the more I was getting yelled at, it just fueled me. Like I remember I was winning something and they were yelling at me. And I just like wanted to go faster where some people were – they really broke down from the mental aspect of it. So the welcome party was definitely my favorite part of, of selection by far. It was fucking fun. The, the was welcome so party fun. was your favorite part? It was so fun. Nice. Yeah. 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 So, so like you said, it, it thinned out pretty quick to, to just the four of you guys. Uh, and then at 24 hours, it was just the two of you. And then, yeah. and then, uh, and then it was right. just you. Yeah, right after, right after we got our break. That was our first break we had. It was about, a, I think it was like a 15-minute break. And they interviewed me, and I did that interview, and then uh, they interviewed the guy. So I remember when they were interviewing 13. I don't even know what his name is. Um, I didn't even know he was 13 until I saw him on that break. And uh, they asked what he's going to finish, and he said 100%. Looking back at the video, he looked like he was dead. He, I, You know, everyone even told me, like, they knew he wasn't going to finish. But I was sort of out of it, you know, and he said 100%. I was like, oh, fuck, maybe he's got that mind like me. So after we stood up, after our, like, break, we had to pick our logs up, go back down to the hill and go to the water. And I had whispered to him. I was like, "Uh, yo, dude, we're fucking, we're halfway there. You know, don't fucking quit. Like, I wanted to be next to somebody, even though you can't talk. But I wanted to, like, just do it with someone. It would have been cool to have, like, that experience bond with someone because none of my friends do that stuff you know it would have been great to finish and I told my wife I said I'm going to finish it with somebody else I, I had that feeling it was going to be me and one I didn't think three people were going to finish four I thought it was going to be me and one other person so it was like right there and I said hey man don't fucking quit and he like put his head down and he like whispered back because the cadre were like in front of us they weren't looking and he was like dude I'm fucking in it and I was like fuck yeah that was the only like thing that we got to say and we walked down to the bottom of the hill and we had to pick up these five gallon buckets. And as soon as we, we bent down, he said, I'm done. And this was this was two minutes after that interview. One minute after that, our whispering conversation. So I was like, what the fuck? And they said to me, since he quit, you get both buckets now. 
and he put his head down and I cracked up. Like I, I like laughed at it. And someone had asked me after I finished selection, they're like, well, you know, why would you laugh? And I was like, that's all you can fucking do. You can't, you can't complain. There's two options, laugh at it and do it or, or quit. And I wasn't going to quit. So you got to just smile at shit like that. And, and I, I teach in my gym too, that when something's really hard, maybe it's push-ups, for example, but if you just smile while you're doing the push-ups, it sends a message to your brain and you become more happy. And the workout will become easier than you when you start going like, and I know I make like faces and stuff, but when you're really like struggling and your face is miserable, your your it sends messages to your brain that your brain's miserable. As soon as your brain says you're miserable, your body shuts. As soon as it sh- it shuts down right away, as soon as your brain says it. So you can never get that message sent to your brain. So, you know, I, I smiled at it and laughed and I was like, let's fucking carry these buckets up the hill. And then it was, it was probably like 23 and a half hours. I, give or take that I was solo for and it was cool fucking fuck it <laughs> so I mean was it did you find it harder when there wasn't another person no, around or was not just... at all. So he quit and I I got I did I wanted him to finish I wanted to do it with someone but then it pumped me up even more um I was like fucking let's do this shit now it's just me me and all these special forces dudes this is this is it I love like guys who make teams like in the military and stuff so I, I don't think I would have quit in front of anybody, especially in front of like guys like the cadre. Like that's, that's like my dream is to, you know, to be able to perform in front of somebody like them, you know? Um, and like cadre Cody, he was one there. He he's a seal. And I like, they're the best to me. If you would have asked me if I could be anything in the world to be a Navy seal there, there, I, I love, I want my son to be one. Um, so I remember at one point, I don't even know what hour it was. It was just me and Kadre Cody. And he, he said something along the lines, like, I would, I would love to be on a team with you. And I just like, I was fucking, I was happy as shit. You know what I mean? Like what a, what a fucking thing for someone to say to me, especially, you know, if anybody, if, you know, Jason would have said that he, you know, he's, I think, I think he's a ranger or if it would have been awesome to hear anybody say it, but knowing that it was a seal and I, that's like what, you know, they're like God to me. So it was fucking, I was pumped, you know, like you can't quit in front of those guys. They're like hardcore dudes. So yeah, I was like, I was happy just to be that way in front of them. So yeah. So, cool. so you said, you said at the 24 hour mark, uh, you said that, um, this was, this was, and this was only 24 hours in that it was by far the hardest thing you've ever done. Yeah. Still, I mean, so it is the hardest thing. Like, what is something that you've done that comes anywhere close? So, so it's like what I said before, and I, I wrote this again in the AR. Nothing in selection is impossible. It's all hard. Nothing's really impossible. But what makes it hard is the back to back, just just going. You know, um, if you if you took anything in selection and put it as itself, it ain't hard. You could do it. I could do it on my worst day, hungover. Um, but when you just, it's, uh, it, and it is abuse to your body, but when you put that, this one event next to the next, to the next, and you have your rock on the whole time. So it's like, you know, that weight, it, that's what made it the hardest event that I had ever done. So if I, I were to break one event down, it would, nothing would compete into running an ultra marathon in mountains, you know, like running 50 miles in, in mountains, the, mountains in, in Vermont is no joke. I had to stop. I had cramps. Like I had, I had cramps in places I didn't even know existed. I never got one cramp during selection, not one. So an ultra marathon is way harder physically than any event in selection, but an ultra marathon only lasts the time it takes for you to finish. Then you're done. Whereas you're in selection for 48 hours. So once I was by myself, I didn't have any competition. So I basically just had to compete with myself. So I knew if I were to finish it fast, I would just get, there's no finish line. And I remember having to explain that to a lot of people and they, they asked me about it. They're like, man, you're going to probably win it. And I was like, there's, you don't win selection. You finish it. It's four, it's 48 hours. So, so 
that's why it was the hardest thing that I had done because I've never worked out for 24 hours straight, and that's what made it the hardest thing. So at that point, I was I was putting out hard for 24 hours, like, and it showed. You know, I won, I won fucking everything, but boy, does it fuck your body, you know, at the 24 hours. So, so it, it was actually so it worked out to my advantage that no one that that 13 quit because then I didn't have to compete with him, you know, doing like. Because I would, if it would have did that going into that second day, then I would have been putting out even harder to to win. So I didn't have anybody to compete with that second day, so which slowed down my pace, I think, a little bit also. So uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the mental aspects that that people talk about is is you know when you do something like this, knowing your why, like like why yeah. are you doing this, and and I know in all the selections, you you know any videos that you see get the cadre yelling at you why are you here why are you here uh-huh. um tell, tell us about your why and like how that played into your your event yeah so um my i would have done this with or without me having kids i would have signed up for it um i love it i love doing that stuff and i have to say and i did it for my kid you know, for, for my kids, especially my son, I want him to, I want both of my kids, but I want my son to see that your mind can do whatever you fucking want it to. Um, anything you want, it, it, it can do it. And th- that would be my number one reason, but it's not because I was doing this before they were born. Um, so I would have signed up for this regardless, um, just to push myself and, and to do it. And then my second reason was you know, to be a good role model for my children. Um, I want them to, I want them to have a strong mind. I think, I think this world is weak right now. I see kids, me being as a a father and a a parent, seeing the other kids at the playground. I take my son to the skate park all the time. And I see these kids falling on the ramps and the dad's running over and picking them up. Drives me, drives me crazy. You know, my son falls down. I say, get back up. I don't care if he's crying or not. Get back up and ride your bike. Um, if you know, if he wailed his head on the ground, I'd be the first one there picking him up. I, I, I want him to grow up knowing that he can push past pain and just, and just do, do shit. Um, so it was really important for me, to, for him to see me do that. And he knew all about, it. he knows about special forces all the time. We watch shows about snipers on TV all the time. And, and, you know, we shoot guns together. We I take him to the range. Um, he puts on full camouflage outfits and hides in our, our woods in our yard and like puts it with his little his little rifle he has and he you know I, I, I do it for I do it for me and I do it for him to I want I want my kids to grow up and you know be tough. So it was I, I love that, you know, like I think a lot of parents don't aren't good role models for their kids and I'm not they're not bad parents, but they're not doing anything either. They're giving their kid the iPad. When, when they're out to dinner just to entertain them like you don't your kid doesn't need the ipad they need to have discipline and, and sit there and be there you know they don't need the ipad they don't need games they need to be outside doing stuff and yeah and i'm always doing so if if are you friends with me on facebook uh not yet no well if you're friends with me on facebook any picture i put up my son's next to me uh this weekend i had fights i had people fighting for my gym He's at all my fights with me. You know, he helps me corner. He carries the bucket out. He gives the water. He's everywhere I go. I bring my son with me. You know, so he's he's like my best friend. You know, I love having him around me. So yeah, it's huge motivation for me to have him there and stuff. But yeah, I I saw in the video. I mean, they were they were there at the finish. That he was uh, he was watching you go through the shark attack. Yeah. So so what what was that like? I mean, when when that kind of started and you knew like, all right, this is it. Well, I did. So when I was going up the hill, I knew that I, everyone knows the order of selection. I think it'd be great if they mixed up the order. I really do. Cause I, you sort of have a plan of attack in my head. Like I got the PT test. I got the welcome party. I got sandbag PT. I got log log PT. I got the long walk and I have the finish. They, they should mix that shit up. Am I, Cause they would throw you off. You're like, what the hell? Like if they just did the long walk, like right at the rip, you know, like everyone's going to think they're walking for one mile and all of a sudden they're like, when are we stopping? Um, that would be great to throw people off. It would have thrown me off. 
not saying I would have quit or I wouldn't make anybody else quit, but it, 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 there's a format to selection and everybody knows it. They should, they should really mix it up. They can keep all the, the criteria in there. Start with sandbag PT, then do the welcome party. Make, maybe make the welcome party in the middle. Why not? You know? Uh, so, so when it was coming, I, I had finished the long walk and I got beat down a little bit in the water. But then when I was walking up to the top of the hill, I saw all those orange buckets. I had been care. I carried them fucking things for a long time. So I thought that they were full of gravel or water. Or they were filled with water. I found out, but I thought that I had no clue what time it was. So I thought that they were going to be more for me to carry. I had no clue what, what time it was. And, uh, so I actually didn't know it was over, like when it was ending. And then I, once they started, they turned me around and he started, started squirting water in my eyes and he told me to hold my rock in front of my face, which it had been going on for quite a while before that. That's when I thought, oh, this is when it's going to end because I had heard that they try to blind you and then the flag pulls back. But you can't get like hopeful that that's going to happen because cause then if you're like, oh, it's going to be done and then you got another hour, like you keep your brain up. So I was like, maybe this is the end now. And then, you know, right after that, you know, a couple minutes later, it had ended. So, yeah, that was like how it finished. But I didn't know. I actually didn't think it was over at that point until they told me to hold my rock in front of my face. So I got placed, I had water, and then I replaced it with my rock. So that was when I finally realized that it was sort of coming. I thought. So out of out of the whole out of the whole forty eight hours, like. Like you said, it's kind of everything by itself is doable. Was there one thing where you were like, man, that that was the biggest kick in the nuts? Um, they had me bring every single sandbag that was at selection from – they had like a gravel pit, and I had to bring it to the top of the hill. I, it was probably about a quarter-mile walk from one to the other. And they had all the sandbags laid out and they ranged. I think that there were 17 of them, I think. And they ranged from 30 pounds to 80 pounds. Most of them were 40 and 60 pounds. I think there was maybe like three 30 pounders and maybe three 80 pounders and mostly 40s and 60s. But um, I had to bring one sandbag. I could bring as many as I wanted to, but I had my ruck on. So it's a lot. That you can do. I had to bring them to the top of the hill and then walk down, and get it. And it, that was just mentally, it was just boring. That was the hardest thing for me um, during that part. Point as far as mental, like it was just like fucking. Let let me do something else. Like let's shark bait me a little bit, or whatever they call it, shark attack me a little bit. Um, just to break because it took hours, hours and hours. That was hard and. The long walk was really hard. That was hard in a, more of a physical way because my uh, my right knee like was really f- fucked up. The good thing about how bad my right knee hurt was I totally forgot about my balls. That was good. They hurt. They hurt a lot. But my knee started like really like it was injured. It's still not 100 percent. And um, I can't do everything fully yet with my right knee. So but my, my head was in it. So when I was on the long walk and I was like hallucinating in the woods and um, I, I like my body had never shut down like that. So it was like more like it was like really frustrating because I wanted to fucking go, but I could only walk so fast. And I was sort of dragging my right leg behind. Everyone thought I was walking like that to make my nuts not, you know, rub that that's I was walking like that because of my knee. I had to have my right foot turned out sideways and it was almost like a dragging motion behind me. It was, it was in brutal pain. So that was bad because it hurt and I could only walk so fast. It was like minimal time. And then I was like seeing all kinds of shit in the woods. So my body's like, or my head was like, come on, Mark, fucking pick it up. You know, it's just, just pain. And I'm good at the working through pain, but how my knee was just so injured. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. So I was like just mentally fried and it was, it was just dark. It was just dark. And I wish I would have thought, but obviously your head's not clear at that hour of you working out. I thought it got light at 6am. It didn't get light till like 
738 at that time of year. So I was like, damn, man, this fucking night's taking forever. And so when the sun finally came up, I was thinking it was 6 a.m. And it, it wasn't 6 a.m. It was 8. So I had that that two-hour difference. So, so, so long walk was really physical on my body. And my and the, the sandbag was, like, for my head, like, just boring. Just boring. So you said your your knee was was pretty banged up, and and obviously the issues with with your peaches. Um, <laughs> like how how has recovery been since? Like I mean, was it like <laughs> fetal position and projectile vomiting, or uh, how, no, no, like, no, 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 <laughs> nothing like that. The uh, I was like really sore. Uh, I was shocked that I thought I was gonna be able to sleep good. I didn't sleep for what was it three days? I didn't sleep for three days after selection. 